Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew and this is the Just a Guy Linux YouTube channel. Uh, it has been a while, but I wanted to thank all of you that have continued to support my YouTube channel by watching the videos, by leaving comments, and by subscribing. Uh, even though I haven't put out a video in over four months, uh, I've noticed still an increase in uh, subscribers. Uh, I'm almost at uh, I'm almost at a thousand. I'm at like 926 right now, which is fantastic. And I wanted to thank you all for doing that. Uh, as far as new content is concerned, I wanted to say that new content will be coming out next week. Um, I haven't had kind of like the steam to do it. Um, back in September, my last video, uh, it was the day of or the day before Hurricane Ian uh, slammed into Florida. As a Floridian, a multi-generational Floridian, uh, it made landfall to the south of uh, our area, but not too far south. So there was damage um, all up and down. This was a catastrophic hurricane. It was at the top of the, uh, it was a top category four hurricane that made landfall. Um, I do have one picture I can share with you. Let me go ahead and open up my um, Thunar and go to downloads. I downloaded this just so that you could see. And if I hit F, uh, it's going to show you um, a picture of me <laughs> with a, a chainsaw. And everything that you see here uh, is was on my is this is my property, and um, everything is gone now. I mean, all the trees, even the standing trees, were left so damaged uh, that everything needed to come down. And it took it took months for me to get through all of it. Um, I did have to have some help and some big trucks to come in and do some of the cutting. But uh, overall, I feel very fortunate. Nobody in my family, I did lose power for a while, but no one in my family was, uh, was hurt. Um, not like a lot of other people. And I wanted to um, share that with you. It's not an excuse for not making videos, but it did kind of like caused me to uh, lose my kind of like mojo or steam in making a new content. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now one of the contents, uh, sorry, one of the comments rather uh, made uh, in a video that I did, I don't even remember which one, was a, a can you show us what you've currently got going on your, um, uh, as part of your, your build today? Now I have been kind of testing and using Qtile on a different machine and I might, I might actually switch, but uh, currently I am still using BSPWM. And what you're seeing is my BSPWM build with Polybar. I use XXHKD as my uh, hotkey daemon. And um, this is what I've got going. Let me go ahead and hit super enter. Um, I'm using Kitty as my terminal. Although I did see this uh, video with Matt uh, using Tilex. I was like kind of curious with that. That's pretty cool, by the way. Uh, anyway, as you can see um, on the screen, there's a kernel up here. Uh, this is Debian. As you know, I only do Debian videos. So Debian bookworm, Debian testing. And the kernel is currently 6.1. And uh, I'm up to date on everything. So um, just wanted to know that I just let, let you know this is uh, February 9th, 2023. Um, I wanted to go ahead and show you some of the other things that uh, this build has. Um, while I'm while I'm here, I'm going to go BS. <laughs> that's for uh, Bash script, and click on that. This is my Bash script. I'm going to go ahead and open another window. Oh, I can't do that, can I? Oh no, I can. Uh, anyway, so I opened up a, uh, another terminal just to let you know. So if I hit, you know, df, it shows you, you know, df dash h. Uh, but here's some of the cool things: um, gc for git clone. Uh, if I do hi, you'll see up here. Hi there, welcome to my BSPWM desktop. Um, as far as um, as far as some of the other aliases is concerned. I'm using install, update, and upgrade. And when you do a, um, 
you know, an upgrade, it lets you know, or an update, it lets you know how many uh, upgradable packages need to be done. And I just, if I want to see that list, I can just, I just say up list. Okay. So a lot of this stuff I've done in videos before. This is a really simple, super simple um, bash script, uh, sorry, bash RC file. And um, just to let you know, this is a, um, a uh, oh, it says it right here actually. This is an i7 machine. Uh, the thing that is different a little bit about this is that it is an ultra wide display. So I don't know exactly how that's going to translate into a YouTube video. Uh, so we're going to find out. Anyway, um, when I type in, let me go ahead and close this. So this is, by the way, this is um, micro. So as you can see, if I hit BS, where is it? BS micro and then open my bash RC file. So if I hit control Q and reload, it's just going to reload this the bash uh, RC file. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, my configuration files. And let's go ahead and um, and let's look at this file. So this is my bash or my BSPWMRC file. I am using some rules, um, including uh, some floating uh, rules, like if I'm doing LX appearance or calculator, or even if XFCE4 terminal is kind of a secondary terminal like this. These terminals are kitty, by the way, okay? Um, this, rule, this rule right here might be interesting to some of you, okay? And that is, on an ultra wide monitor, I don't want to do kind of like a normal uh, binary tree for my open terminals, sorry, my open windows rather. So what I do is I just say, I want everything to stay um, vertical. And by doing that, I'm not, like I said, this is me not knowing probably any other way to do this. There's probably a better way to do this. But if I hit another terminal, to open, it simply goes from the active window to the east and puts in a vertical, uh, another vertical window. So I like having that rather than it going down uh, and chopping the screen in half. I actually like having all vertical um, windows. Now, you say, hey, look, there's, you know, it, it kind of messes up the flow when you don't have the same uh, size on these windows. So let me go ahead over here and I'm going to go to my um, XXHKD and let's, let's um, edit the XXHKD RC. It's been a while, right? Okay. Um, and I think down it's close to the bottom here. There, right here. This is the very bottom, actually. Okay. So what I do is I have a super equal in my XXHKD. All right. Now this super equal command is so that if I have multiple windows, I mean, I'll go ahead and add, and do one more window, okay? And it, it and maybe not. So you can see that between these three, this is taking up 50% real estate and these are taking up 25% real estate. Now, if I wanted them just to take up an equal, so 33 and a third percent real estate, then I'm going to hit super equal, all right? And super equal changes the dimensions of each window to make it um, the same for everything that's active on that in that particular uh, workspace. So I kind of like having that. Now there are some things, while I've got this open, there are some things that you might want to uh, incorporate as well. I have, I'm using um, light 
Excel as an editor as well as Genie. Okay, let me go ahead and close this one in the middle here. All right, and let me hit super equal. And I'm gonna hit super L. And there's light Excel. Okay, super equal again. And there's light Excel. And this is something I've been looking at as far as text editing. It's pretty cool because I actually like having the feedback of colors and this is a color plugin. Now, there are ways to do this in uh, NeoVim and stuff, and I, I'm good with that. I, I actually ha use uh, NeoVim sometimes and uh, use a color plugin so that it kind of represents this type of thing. This is just a, uh, a good way to, for me to use it. They don't have the same type of plugin, at least that I know of in Genie. Um, so I have been kind of switching between Light XL. Uh, the app image as well as Genie uh, for text editing. Now, let me go ahead and close this. Let's also take a look at some of the other things that I've got going here. Let me start at the top. Super B is Firefox. Like I said, Super Return is Kitty. Um, if I hit Super Space, I'm using Rofi. Um, and we can get into Rofi config. It's not that big a deal though. Super N is a script that uh, uses a network manage that uh, has a Rofi network manager. I'm not gonna pull that up, but if I do hit Super X, you can see that it's log out, shut down and reboot. Um, Rofi key is Super H. And you can see some of the, uh, some of the uh, key bindings that are easy and even if I click on that in my uh, in my poly bar, it shows some quick uh, key binding um, cheat sheet, basically. Okay, um, so you've everyone's seen Thunar, everyone's seen Genie a million times, Chrome and Discord and Calculator. I'm trying to find something that might be interesting. Um, uh, as far as Super Q is a way to just close the window. Super Q. I used to do Super Shift C, and then I got, I felt like I'm doing way too much work here. So it's Super Q, quit the window, you know. Um, as far as resizing, you go left and right. So Super Control, uh, Super Control left. And. Super control shift is right. Um, so you get the idea. This is how it you can resize windows manually. Um, super shift K, I'm using a bash script also that says change volume up, change volume down, and mute. Now I don't have to, I can just do it manually right here. Like if I wanted to click on that, it would mute and um, and I'm just also so, but I, but I'm, you know, let me just show you super shift J and you super shift K. And you can see that it, the volume pops up and changes. Okay. Now this is pretty cool uh, as far as um, using Scrot. This command right here, you can select an image. So if I hit super alt S, okay, I'm going to hit super alt S. Hopefully this shows up, all right? And you can see the cross hair on my screen. And if I just select that, then it automatically just selected that portion of the screen and sent that to that selected image to my pictures directory. So this, um, this is pretty good. Um, and that's pretty much it. So. Like I said, this super equal is something I think is really kind of cool. Not everybody uses it, um, but you can see that, you know, if, if, especially if you have multiple windows open and you hit super equal, everything gets redistributed really nicely. Now, again, this is a manual tiler and not a dynamic tiler. So if I was using uh, something like Qtile, I don't think I would have this, the same need. Uh, I think it would just do it for me automatically, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm considering changing to Qtile, okay? 
Now, as far as a, let me go ahead and close one of these. Let's go over here to um, Polybar. And let's, uh, I'm going to use V here and let's say a minimal. And there, this is my V, this is my configuration for Neo Vim, or so I just use V, kind of like Matt does with uh, Linux Cast. Um, and it shows a lot of the colors and so on and so forth. Now, this is a really simple, I think it's, this is in my uh, GitHub directory as well. Uh, I did get a, uh, I did get a, a, a comment on one of my uh, videos and this, this is to answer your question, <laughs> which I think I did in the comments was, if you want a tray, all you have to do is say tray equals right, and then it shows up over here, okay? Um, and then everything else you can see is easily um, done. In fact, there are things like um, write modules here. Um, like this, if I click on this button here, or basically this image, I should say, it will pop up uh, CPUX, and which is a you know a pretty good uh, useful tool to have in case you wanted to. Hey, what was my what did I do? I, I forgot what my uh, I forgot what my motherboard is, for example, or or what have you, or what CPU this is. So it's just it was it's kind of like redundant, but at the same time. Uh, I thought it was nice to have this kind of feedback. Um, I don't have Bluetooth on this particular uh, machine. I do on my test machine, weirdly, but not on this machine. So anyway, um, as far as cust the theme of this, so you get an idea as to what everything looks like. And let's go. Oh, yeah, well, actually, you know. Super Q, I mean, uh, Control Q, I should have said, and then Super Q, there you go. And let's go ahead and look at custom look and feel. Uh, I am using the Colloid Pink Dark Dracula theme. Um, as far as icons, I'm also using the Colloid Pink Dracula Dark. Um, so. There you go, in case you're, anybody was interested in that. And, you know, as far as a um, file manager, I'm using Thunar. I like Thunar. It's always been one of my, my favorite, I think. Um, and that's about it. So this is going to be a quick video that, you know, demonstrates what I've currently got going on my, uh, on my machine that I use every day. Uh, I like um, using BSPWM. I don't think there's anything wrong. In fact, it's probably, for me at least, it was the easiest transition from going from like an XFCE or a full desktop environment to a window manager, okay? Because I think the configuration files are so easy to uh, get through. Now, there you can get really, you know, really hardcore and do a lot of stuff with the config. I'm not doing a whole lot. I don't need a lot. But the truth of the matter is, uh, when you have a compartmentalized BSPWMRC file, apart from the XXHKDRC file, um, those two things make it really easy. Make it really easy for you to say, oh, I understand what's happening here. Okay. Not like a lot, and I don't really have to know a lot when it comes to um, Lua or Python or anything else. Some of these other um, some of these other window managers are written in. I don't really have to know anything, and I don't. So that's why I'm just a guy. Anyway, I will get I will see you next week when I put out new content. But thank you again so much for um, viewing from commenting and subscribing, and I'll see you soon.